What's up guys, it's me Alan, back at it again with another video today on the channel. Uh, today I'm going to be giving a retrospective on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, a game that I've just finished playing with about 80 hours invested in, give or take. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but I'll check later and put it in the description. Firstly, a quick disclaimer, uh, I'm not a professional reviewer and obviously I'm not getting paid to do this. This should be fairly obvious considering the size of my channel, but I feel like I should say it anyway. Um, take everything I say in this video with a grain of salt because most of these things are subjective and you might feel different ways when you actually play the game. And I know this video is a bit late and there have already been other reviews out lately, but this isn't necessarily a review, it's more of a retrospective on what I experienced through the game. I'm not really going to tell you where, whether you should buy this game or not. I'm more just going to tell you like what my thoughts um, of the game are upon completing it, as I just did about an hour ago. Now that that's over, let's get started. In the background is some gameplay of me messing around in the open world. Uh, it includes me doing a raid and doing a world event with a slightly morally ambiguous character. So yeah, let's get started. First part I want to talk about is the story. The story follows a clan of Vikings as they journey from their native Norway to England in search of greater fortunes. Eivor, the main protagonist, and their clan fight to pacify the entirety of England, encountering ancient and mythical forces along the way. Overall, I thought the story was pretty decent. It wasn't excessively long or cumbersome, and I enjoyed the different themes of each campaign relating to each territory, as is the way the story is structured. An example of this is how, you know, different territories have different central themes of the campaign. One might be deception, you might be working to solve some sort of mystery, and another one might be, you know, they're anticipating a great threat and you're trying to deal with that threat and, you know, uh, do a raid or, you know, defend a territory or something like that. The themes are a lot different, and some might be happy, some might be sad, and I thought it was there was a good variety among them that makes the story a lot better. Um... One qualm I did have with the main story is that it includes little to no side missions. Uh, these come in the form of world events. I'll speak more on that later. Uh, the story doesn't have a whole lot of bosses, which is one thing I didn't like about this game. The game starts off on a good foot, including a couple bosses per each territory, but this drops off later in the game. I would have liked to see more bosses that require you to use certain styles of fighting, but sadly each boss can be conquered in roughly the same way. What I mean by this is I would have liked to see, you know, something where, you know, certain styles were more efficient. For example, you would have had maybe fighting with a spear and long, long longer range, your bow would be more effective than just charging in with a hammer. But unfortunately, each of the bosses is susceptible to the same sort of damage. You're going to want to get in close, dodge, dodge, hit, hit, dodge back, shoot him a couple times, and then repeat, repeat, repeat. Overall though, decent story. Not award-winning, but worthy of at least one playthrough, especially when considering how the storylines in this game connect with some of the other Assassin's Creed games. And if you're sort of a lore junkie like I am, you're going to really appreciate where the story comes from in terms of like a broader Assassin's Creed perspective. And yeah, that's pretty much it when it comes to the story. That's what I noticed at least. Um, another thing that is not its own section but is sort of a subsection is the protagonist. At the beginning of the game, the game presents you with a choice, uh, male Eivor, female Eivor, or let the animus choose. If you choose the third option, you'll be playing as female Eivor for about 85% of the game. Um, the male character is featured in some of the more lore-based storylines. To avoid spoilers, um, those are based in Norse mythology and stuff and they uh, connect to um, the ancient civilization known as the Isu, which is kind of the overarching storyline of Assassin's Creed. Um, I personally like the male character better, but I did play with both because the game gives you the option to switch back and forth any time during your playthrough. The male voice actor, Magnus Brune, has experience playing Vikings in The Last Kingdom, which is a Netflix show I recently finished watching, and in my opinion, uh, the male Eivor captures the essence of Vikings a little bit better than his female counterpart, although both are fine. Um, if you don't care too much about the protagonist and just want to play, then, you know, the female is fine. Um, She's a pretty good Viking as well. Part two, so the second sort of thing I wanted to talk about is the world. The world is massive and has a ton of secrets to uncover. The map is littered with icons, which are usually gear, world events, um, which are the game's substitute for side missions or collectibles. Another cool addition to this game are zealots, which are many bosses who roam the land. You'll need to kill all of the zealots in order 
to unlock the game's true ending um, that connects to all Assassin's Creed games. There's going to be one ending that uh, is the ending for Assassin's Creed Valhalla, and then there's another ending which connects to the Assassin's Creed saga as a whole. And to unlock that one, you're going to need to kill all of these many bosses. Um, the game has three main maps. It has England, where the majority of the game takes place, Norway, where the Vikings are from, and Vinland. Norway is the game's starting area, and but it is unusually large for a starting area, meaning it could be used as the entire map for another game, but this game is just really big, so it's not. It's interesting how they chose to do so little with its story rise. Um, Vinland is the Viking name for America, and you venture there for a mission to assassinate a member of the Order. Not a whole lot there, but it was cool to explore for a couple hours. Uh, overall, the world is huge and offers plenty to do. One thing of note is that England in general is definitely portrayed as darker or gloomier than Egypt or Greece, but I think that works to its advantage in this story. Uh, the way they portray Norway in terms of like the overall vibes that it gives off, that the Norway part is similar to that of the previous two settings, which were Egypt and Greece. It's like kind of jovial, happy, uh, it's fun to explore. It gives off a sense of adventure. Um, but England is like, it's like really weighty and serious. And you can feel that when you're exploring, especially some of the more gloomier areas when it's like raining and stuff. I know they don't have the greatest of weather over there, but uh, it's captured pretty well in, in this in this game. Part three uh, is the mechanics. This is not going to be like, a, like too deep of a dive, but there are a couple things I wanted to talk about. Uh, it ditches the RPG focus mechanics of the past two games for a more traditional Assassin's Creed feel, which in my opinion is a good thing. While it is true that the combat gets more difficult depending on the area, every target in the game, every enemy can be assassinated with one hit via the hidden blade. The skill system is pretty simple. Every time you level up, you gain two points which can be used to gain skills. The skill tree is split into the bear, wolf, and raven trees focusing on melee, ranged, and stealth respectively. As far as the combat goes, it's a lot like Odyssey, but it's slowed down a lot. Different weapon combinations make the combat different and more nuanced and require you to play differently. This is one of the great things about the combat. Um, as, you know, you're going to approach situations differently depending on the different weapon combinations you would use, which is something I haven't really uh, seen before in Odyssey. You know, in other games, obviously in some other games, you might be approaching a situation differently depending on the actual weapon you have. It was like using a bow um, opposed to a gun. But in this game, you're going to want to approach an actual fight differently. Like when you get into a direct conflict with another enemy, you're going to try to play differently, dodge around, move differently depending on the different weapons you have, which is one thing I really liked about this story. Um... Another thing about the combat is it's overall more dodge focused as parrying is actually pretty difficult to do um, without like a shield. Like if you're dual wielding two swords or something like that, it's going to be pretty difficult to parry effectively. So you're going to want to dodge, dodge, dodge a lot. Um, I ended with a power level of 345 at the end and found that the combat gets significantly less challenging after you reach power level 275 plus. At this point, both the Asgard and Jotunheim storylines should be a piece of cake. Another mechanic that is new to the saga is raids. Raids are a big part of the game and are required to level up your settlement, which is another new mechanic, base building. Um, the base building part was interesting, and uh, you need to upgrade certain buildings in order to unlock certain quests and stuff it's sort of interesting and contributes to the narrative as a whole helps to strengthen the bond between you Eivor and the other Viking characters in the game stealth mechanics return as well I don't have a whole lot to say about this because the stealth is pretty much exactly similar to the other Assassin's Creed game there's not much else that the game does with it but the one thing that is new is hostile areas where you can go you can go into them but you have to wear, like, your hood, you need to wear a disguise in order to avoid being attacked. That's pretty much it, and my final verdict of this game is, again, it's pretty different from other Assassin's Creed games, but in my opinion, it's different in a good way. It combines classic elements with new gameplay to carve a decent gaming experience. The story, world, and mechanics work in tandem to make this game shine, at least until the next Assassin's Creed experience arrives. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you all later. Peace.
That's the wreckage of your ship. By all that is great, I cannot believe my eyes and ears. Your past is dubious. I cannot trust a man who lost his brothers so easily and so suspiciously. Nothing! The arm ring is mine. Mine! This kingdom was to be one of the... Now I blind you with blood, you sapper! You have broken a sacred alliance with the greatest...